Tonight's topic is about the midah of worry. A lot of people worry, worry too much about things they shouldn't be worrying. So we have to know how to deal with this particular midah because there are times that it is good, it is actually healthy to worry. We will see about what it is okay to worry and about what it is not really okay to worry. Before we begin, just a small introduction about the word de'aga in Hebrew, worry. Where does it come from? Why is worry <coughs> called worry, de'aga? For those of you who recall the lecture on Kabbalah, one of the lectures involved the letters of the Aleph bit. Lashon HaKodesh, the Hebrew language, is a very unique tongue where words consist of letters and each letter has a particular perula, a particular function. If you knew the functions of the letters of the alphabet, you can actually construct words in describing certain activities and certain things that you observe in life. So once you know the rules of the letters, in looking upon a word, even though you don't know the meaning because you don't know Hebrew, but by analyzing the letters, you can see what is happening, what it is that it is involved because of the combinations of certain letters. And I went through every single letter of the alphabet, the alphabet, gimel, dalet, hey, what each one represents. And we also spoke about the significance of the letters depending on the position where it is in the letter. Since most words in Hebrew consist of a root of three letters, we basically have the essence of that activity or of that particular object as the first letter, the first position describing what it is that we're dealing with. The second position describing where it is happening or to what it is happening. And the third letter, which is the least important, nevertheless it's part of the root, is how it is being done, how it is being expressed. So when you combine all three, you have a good idea of what we're talking about. The letter Dalit in the word Deaga, to worry, what does Dalit represent? Dalit represents constriction and limitation in the same way a door, a delit. What does a delit do? A delit, a door, limits, stops, blocks, constricts. You follow me? You have the same thing with the word devik. Devik is glue or to attach. It limits, right? Din, judgment, constrictive limiting. Derech. Derech is a path. It is limited. You don't go out of this particular path. Right? You also have the dal, a poor man. Limited resources. You see how the first letter describes what we're talking about? There's some limitation here, some constriction. Then we have the second letter of the Aga is an Aleph. Aleph is, of course, the nucleus, the essence, the human being himself. It's the first letter of the alphabet. It is the root of everything. So this limitation, this constriction, is happening to who? To the individual. And how is it happening? That's the third letter. It is happening in a Gimel way. Gimel is in an expansive way, in a growing way, in a moving way in an exaggerated way, in a way that it's getting out of control and going in a great distance. Gimel representing movement. Gimel representing growth, gadol, gag, the roof. Going out, expansive, moving, flowing, going from place to place. So here we have an incredible concept where we can understand from the letters. Did you more or less figure out how this works? Da'ag or de'aga is a certain limitation that one is self-imposing on himself, pretty much, because of circumstances, of course, and constricting himself in a very, very large way. Because when a person worries a lot, it gets out of control. And what carries him away? His imagination, right? It's not real, but it's, it's a limitation which is self-imposed on himself that continues to grow and grow, and of course, it is bothersome, it, it, it's painful, it's difficult to deal with. Well, now that I gave you a little bit of an introduction about the letters of the Agar, 
Can anybody tell me why a bear in the Shona Kodesh is called a dove? It has a dalet and it has a bet. Okay? Could you think, guess, why would a dove be called a dove? And I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint. It has nothing to do with the way he looks. Not every animal is called or given a certain name by appearances alone. It could be something about his nature. But for that, you have to know a little bit about animals. All right. I don't think you'd, you'd guess it so easily. But I'm going to give you another hint. What is the favorite food of a bear? Honey. Honey. Not sushi. <laughs> Did you say sushi? <laughs> honey. Exactly. And how do you say honey in Hebrew? Dvash. So look at the first two letters of honey. Devash is the entire name of a bear. Isn't that interesting? It's not a coincidence. Devash, honey. Dalet, now what is, why is honey called Devash? What did we say about Dalet? Constrictive, limited, sticky, Devik. So you have the Dalet of stickiness in Devash too. Of Devik, of limiting, sticking, not free. That's the Dalet and the bed of Dvash. Bet has to do with what? Bet is something inner, something hidden, just like a bed, like a bite. It's covered, it's enclosed. Honey is not made in the open. Honey does not exist in a natural form. The way the nectar is formed in the flower, the way it appears in fruits, it's always something inner, something in the inside. That is, that is where that sticky, sticky substance is to be found. It's enclosed. But eventually, when it comes out, it's a sheen. The sheen tends to make things move from place to place, like the word shinui, change. So there's a flow, there's a change to the honey. There's a transformation to it as it is becoming a honey, a sweet substance. So you see, dov, dvash, you have similar letters, similar description of something that is related to them. So same thing with Daga. The Midah of Daga is constrictive. It's limiting. And it's something, of course, that is painful, hurtful. It's not something that we want to have most of the time. But I, I will give you examples of times where it is positive. It is a positive Midah. Hashem did not just create us with certain Midah that they're always bad. There are times a certain midot, even the negative ones, can be used positively. And we want to know that about the positive use of this midot too. Chachmei Musar, the rabbis tell us that generally speaking, this midot, this characteristic, is a holy aguf. It is toxic. It is a sickness. It is not healthy. Let's call it a symptom. A symptom that, if one does not have under control, can actually make him very, very sick. It can make his heart sick. It could lead to disappointments. It could lead to all kinds of other ills. It, it's not a good thing to have. And as one psychologist explains it, it's a toxic disease that actually paralyzes you. And what did we say before? The Dalat is like a delit. It's like a door. It stops. It stops you from being who you can be. It stops your progress, your potential progress and growth. It makes you sick. So it's not a, it's not a very good midah to have. Now, the more, the more one has this symptom, worries and concerns about olam hazeh, about this world, a world of vanities, it will also prevent him or distance him from proper observance of mitzvot, from learning Torah. Plus, he will also be losing out a lot of what he could really gain if he had the opposite midah, the midah of simcha, of happiness and joy. We've spoken about already simcha, so we're not going to go back into all the benefits, tremendous amount of benefit that the midah of simcha can give us. If one were to develop it, if one were to adapt it, it's one of the most important, most beautiful midot characteristics that one can ever possess. 
And that's something that you're not necessarily born with, but some people tend to have a little bit more simha than others because of their mazal. That is their nature, their character. They're calmer, they're happier, and, and they're more, or they're more generous. All these kinds of midot. So they don't have to work too much in that area. They have to work in other areas. We all have our strengths and weaknesses. I'm just saying that keep in mind that if one has a lot of de'aga, then he will be losing out all the beautiful and all the many ma'alot, the benefits and advantages that he could acquire through simcha. There are two opposites. So, because there are two opposites, you cannot have them two at the same time, obviously. You either have this one or you have the other one. Da'aga would actually impair or would give one a difficult time to achieve simcha. What would be an example of a good, uh, a good da'aga? We say that there are positive forms of worry. What would be an example of that? Well, some examples would be as follows. Someone is concerned, he feels terrible about himself, and he's concerned about the fact that he went against God. He went against Hashem. He committed a sin. He did something wrong. He's worried about that. And he has reason to be worried about it. He knows what that does to his neshama. He knows what that does to his life, what that does for his world to come, his olam haba. So he has valid concerns, concerns dagod, worries, about his neshama more than anything else. That is a positive form of daga. He wants to do something to correct his mistake. Right? This particular type of daga, this characteristic, this positive one, stems from, it comes from, Tohar Hanefesh. Chachmei Musa, the rabbis tell us, anybody displaying, feeling that kind of a, of a guilty feeling of having done something wrong, it's actually pure, it's actually good. Even though he now begins to be worried and he's concerned, but the source of this particular worry is pure. It's from the Tohar Hanefesh. And this, actually, this particular expression or feeling is one of the madrigot, one of the levels of teshuvah. People want to grow, not just financially, but spiritually. They want to become better people, hopefully. They want to do teshuvah. Part of that teshuvah consists of this fine quality that one actually feels regret, remorse, and is pained by what he did in the past. This is coming from Tohar HaNefesh. It's not coming from some observation of something with his physical eyes. It's not coming because he's a nervous person. It is coming from the purity of the soul. Tohar HaNefesh. So therefore, this one is welcome. This particular kind of warrior concern is a positive one. And that's what David HaMelech says. We find many pesukim like that. Ki avoni agid edag mechatati. I will speak about my sin, I will confess, because I'm concerned about it. I'm concerned about my sin. David HaMelech, throughout his life, expressed these feelings of remorse, mistakes that were done in the past. And all of this is, of course, not only for him to say to Hashem, but for us to learn from, to take an example from him, that even though he was such a great man, nobody is perfect, we all make mistakes, but we can't worry too much about it and live in the past. We have to, if we can do something about it, then let's do something about it. But recognition of the mistake is important. Recognition is what will lead us to confess and it will stimulate us or motivate us to move forward, to do something about it. If we don't think about our mistake, we're in denial, then it's never gonna happen. That's not a good trait either. So anytime a Jew expresses this kind of feelings that he feels terrible and he's sincere about it, it's mitohar hanefesh, it's from the purity of the soul, and it's therefore a positive form of worry. Shlomo HaMelech tells us this in other words, Ashrei Adam mefahed tamid, fortunate is the man who always worries, who's always in fear. Wow, that's surprising because his father David says elsewhere, even though I may at times walk in the valley of death, I have no fear for anything. That's what David Amelak says. I'm not fearful. Here his son is saying, Ashrei Adam Mefahed Tamid, who's always afraid, concerned, 
Isn't that a contradiction? It's not. David HaMelech is talking about fear of his enemies. And he had many. I'm not afraid of them. I have Hashem with me. He's protecting me. He's guiding me. And that's the correct attitude to always have. If you're not doing anything wrong, you have no reason to be afraid of anyone. Hashem will be with you. Shalomo HaMelech is talking about something else. He's talking about Shri Adam Mefahed Tamid, of his sins, of his mistakes. How terrible. Is there any way that he can correct them? He should be concerned. But why, why should he be concerned if he already did what he can to correct them? Should he still continue to be concerned? Yes. Maybe his teshuva is incomplete. Maybe he did not accept it. Maybe it was not enough. Maybe it was not strong enough. So perhaps his teshuva is not complete. That's a form of worry or concern that is welcome. One should always think, perhaps I didn't do enough. Perhaps I could have done a lot more. Imagine somebody was given millions of dollars. He should be concerned, perhaps he didn't do the right thing with his money. He just spent it. He could have done so much. He could have helped a lot of poor people, a lot of people in need. And you know, his life is almost gone, almost over. He has reason to be concerned. Perhaps he could have achieved a lot more with that money or with whatever koach, anything that Hashem has given, whatever gift Hashem has given you, you could have accomplished so much more. That's reason to be concerned. Perhaps you didn't do enough, and what a shame that will be. When one leaves this world, you know the shame. The shame is the greatest source of Gehenom. How can we face ourselves when we know we could have done a lot more? So this kind of concern or worry is a positive form of worry. Yaakov Avinu also expressed worry. Yaakov Avinu was concerned about Esav, his brother. He's coming to attack him. He's coming to confront him on his return to Eretz Israel. Yaakov Avinu, you received an aftaha, mi bore olam. You received a promise from the Almighty that he will take care of you, he will protect you, he will be with you. Of all people, you have no reason to worry. But Yaakov is still worried. And he's not a scary cat. He's not a coward, Haz Shalom. He's strong. He has a family behind him. He's a righteous man. So what is he afraid of? Shema yigrom achet. The rabbis tell us he was concerned maybe the sin, some sin on his record, some blemish on his soul will stand in the way. What do you mean stand in the way? Sometimes even though a person may have a promise from Hashem, even a person though may have a good mazal, he's okay, but because of some blemish on his record, that can stand in the way. That can allow a sav who was so careful with kibbut avaim, with, the, with, with honoring his parents, that's a beautiful mitzvah. And he's done it for so long while Yaakov Avinu was away for so many years, he couldn't do it. He was away, right, in the house of Lavan. So maybe here Esav, despite the promise of protection that Yaakov has, maybe Esav will over, overcome, will prevail. Maybe he will, Chaz Shalom, hurt him because there's a sin, there's a blemish on his record. So that is why Yaakov prayed, did whatever he can, split the camp, right? Everything that he can, just in case, that's okay. That kind of a worry is acceptable. That one should have, because you never know. As much as you think you're a nice guy, you don't hurt anybody, you're a tzaddik, you're a hacham, you do everything right, you never know. You can never know. So it's okay to be concerned, and therefore to turn to Hashem, to ask for His forgiveness, just in case, to pray, right? To be a little bit of worried and not overconfident that everything will be right. Everything will work out. Even though we have to have bitachon, faith and trust in Hashem, it's okay, it's acceptable to just be concerned that perhaps, even though I'm fine, maybe there's some blemish on my record. And then, if, and if there is, then one definitely has to be concerned about that. Another positive form of that, guys, when it comes to learning Torah, one should be worried that if he does not review the Torah enough times, he may forget it. Halachot. I have to review it, I have to learn it over and over again, so I should not forget this, 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 this important Torah. That is also welcome. Another form of worry that is welcome is when one is concerned that he, if he gets into a, a heated argument with his friend or neighbor, it may get out of hand. It may become a big halul Hashem and machloket. He may get hurt from this. So it's good that he's worried about it. It's good that he's thinking 10 times about it. Should he say it? Should he not say it? How should he say it? 
Sometimes this kind of worries are good because you don't want to make terrible mistakes if you can avoid them. You don't want there to be a machloket if you can stop it. So to be worried about the potential of a machloket, a riv, a sikhsuch, a fight in the family, or whatever other argument that may erupt out of this action or this word, that's good. Be worried about that because you don't want that to happen. So if you have to think about something because you are afraid that this may not be, it may not have such a good outcome, that's positive. Let's say somebody is going through a rough time. There's some tsara in his life, in his family. Some terrible thing happened. There's reason to worry that maybe somebody committed an avon, a sin. Maybe there was chilul shabbat. Maybe there was a problem of nida, tarata mishpacha, family purity. Maybe there was something else that somebody did wrong. And because of that, he's getting a slap, a slap from heaven. These things happen. These things happen all the time. What can be and should be concerned when things go terribly wrong. These small things, it could be just mazal. Mazal. But when things go terribly wrong, when things are very, very bad, right? The first thing people ask me is, maybe somebody gave me an eye nara, an evil eye. That's the first thing they blame. They don't blame themselves, they blame the eye nara. The evil eye, somebody gave me the evil eye. Maybe it's not that. Maybe you did do something that brought upon that, some kitruk, some accusation. It's possible. Many times it's a mazal, it has nothing to do with anything. It's just a mazal, people's mazal go up and down. Not everybody's mazal is a straight shooter, you know, from the time he graduates high school until he leaves this world and retires. There are, there are ups and downs in life. It has nothing to do with anything except with the mazal. But at times there is a kitrug. There is an accusation. And that accusation comes from what? You were very disrespectful of a poor man that came to your door asking for some money. You, bar- you basically threw him out. You closed the door in his face. Do you know that these things can cause a kitrug? Something like that. You might think, oh, what's the big deal? It is a big deal. Sometimes these things can make a difference. So when something terrible happens in the family or to an individual or to somebody close to him, you should be concerned. You should begin to worry. And this is a positive form of worry because maybe certain actions have to be taken to correct it. There is one, however, kind of worry that that we don't really have any control over. It's a negative kind of worry, but we don't really have too much control. And that is what the rabbis tell us in Pirkei Avot, Marbe Nechassim, Marbe De'aga. The more property you have, the more real estate you own, the more worry you will have. You're worried. Management, evictions, problems with tenants, all kinds of issues. Insurance, taxes. You know what some people will tell me? Oh, Rabbi, let, me, let God give me these kind of worries. I don't mind having these kind of worries. Let, me, let him give me the real estate and then I'll, I'll deal with the worries. <laughs> right? Some people don't mind having these kind of worries. But the truth of the matter is, that's a fact. This one is a difficult kind of worry to avoid. The more you have, the more you own, the more your possessions, it, you know, it leads to all kinds of things that you have no control over. You have to hire managers, you have to hire attorneys, you have to have a whole team of people depending on how much property you have. But if that's your life and your mazal, that's part of it. It's difficult to say. Still, even then, there are ways to deal with it properly. It is possible for one to have a good attitude, even though he's a millionaire and has thousands of apartment buildings in condominium. It's still possible, but it's very difficult. It's not easy because it, it's a package deal. You get properties, you get possessions, you get worries. So we saw examples of good worries and bad worries. Is there anybody in this world that has no worries whatsoever? Chachmei Musar tell us that there are some individuals that basically don't have any worries. And those are the ones that have a nefesh elyona, as they call it, a pure soul. A soul that is constantly boteach b'ashem, constantly relying and trusting only in Hashem. They're so connected to Hashem, their emunah and bitachon is so strong in Him, they're so pure in their deeds that nothing bothers them. As we say in Hebrew, shum davar lo mezizotam. They become completely indifferent to all the, the sorrows and grief that exist in this world. 
even though of course they're pained by, by, the, by, by Amisa being in the Galut, in the diaspora, they're pained that the Bet Hamidash is not rebuilt. They're pained because of spiritual things, but not because of the vanities of this world. Most of the, of the worries that people have is anyway about vanities. So people who are pure, who the Neshama is pure, whose trust in Bittachon Hashem is very, very strong, they usually don't have any worries whatsoever. So before we begin to tackle this Midah and how to have better control over it, I want to remind every one of us that one of the best ways to do battle with any negative Midah is to have the right Hashkafot, the right outlook, the right perspective about life. A Jew looks at life very differently than a non-Jew. And when we look at things in a certain way, we make for ourselves priorities. We know what's important and what's not important, certain things we value, certain things we don't value. This makes a world of a difference in how we feel, what kind of a life we have, where, where the emphasis is. So hashkafa, the Hebrew word is hashkafa. If one has the proper hashkafa outlook about life, it makes a big difference. It will help him with just about any single midah, whether it was laziness, whether it was simcha, whether it was anger, any, just about any midah. Having the proper hashkafa means knowing what's really important and what's insignificant, that I don't have to bother. What I should pursue, what I should not pursue. What should I make a big deal or a big fuss of and what not. All of this will depend on what hashkafa, what outlook I have. So let's begin with the Pasuk in Mishlei that tells us about worries in general. He tells us worries are something about the future usually. It's something that is not happening at this given moment. And therefore Shlomo Melech tells us Al Tatser Tzarat Machar. Don't worry or don't be in pain about something that is yet to happen tomorrow. It has not happened yet. And it may never happen. So why worry about it now? Shlomo Melech, with these few words, is telling us what many psychologists are figuring out today. And I'm going to share with you a lot of what they tell us too, with their tips. But they're discovering things from experience, and we already have it in our Sefarim. That a good deal, a large percentage of worries has to do with things about the future things that have not happened yet, and you know what? And many times, or in perhaps even most of the time, they may never happen. So we're worrying about something in vain, for nothing. Al-Tatzer, Tzarat Machan, don't even think, don't let it cross your mind, don't worry about something that potentially may happen in the future, because it's, it's in the future, it's not now. Let me quote to you an example from a non-Jew who pretty much says the same thing in other words. Mark Twain, remember Mark Twain? He says like this, I have known a great many troubles in life, but they never happened. I have known a great many troubles, but they never happened, they never took place. So why did I have to worry about it, right? A lot of things that we worry about never end up happening anyway. So you're having this worries for nothing, this pain, this disappointment, this pressure, and the stress that accompanies all the worries. There is a famous passage, rhyme, I think it is from the Eben Ezra, that says it even more beautiful. It's in Hebrew, so it rhymes beautifully. So I'm going to tell it to you in Hebrew and then in English. He says like this, Ha'avar ein, ha'atid adain, ha'hoveke heref ein, da'agam inayin. If you understand in Hebrew, it's beautiful. It rhymes. It basically goes like this. Ha'avar, the past, is not around anymore. The future has not arrived yet. The present will be gone in, in, a, in a split second. So wh why worry? Get up and drink wine. <laughs> you always know, be, be, be merry. Be happy. Enjoy life. You know, those, for the past, it's gone. You can't do anything about it. The future is not here yet. The present is going to be gone. Before you know it, it's gone, right? So why worry? You know, what is it to worry about? There's nothing that you can do about it anyway. 
And that is what the, the rabbis tell us is the, the main problem with the worry. The main problem is that if it's something that can be fixed, then take care of it. If it's something that is impossible for you to fix, then why worry about it? One of the things that for sure will happen that we have no control over is death. Everybody dies in the end. We have no control. It will for sure happen. Is anybody worried about it here? Nobody even thinks about it. Nobody thinks about dying because they can't stop it. Because they can't do anything about it. Because it will for sure happen. So it's something that will for sure happen. It's something that we can't do anything about it. And that is why we don't worry about it. <laughs> and here we're worried about something that may never happen. So if we can do something about it, then obviously we should do. If you can't do anything about it, then don't worry about it. Because about the things that are for sure going to happen, you don't worry about. Something that may never happen, you're going to worry. doesn't make sense. You see, so there's, there's, a, there's a faulty logic over here. Again, if you can do something about it, then do. Then why worry? Just take care of the problem. If you can't do anything about it, then why worry about it? A very good way, therefore, to deal with worry is with the hashkafa, with the outlook, shakol me hashamayim anyway, right? Anything that happens to us in life for which we did not make a decision is from heaven. That's been decreed from heaven. The only areas for the most part where we make decisions that count, that are meaningful, is Yirat Shamayim. Do we perform mitzvot or Khalila Fakhas, God forbid, Avera, a sin? Everything else, how much money you make, who you end up getting married, what kind of kids you will have, who your neighbor will be, what kind of a job you will have, right? Who you will meet, whether they will accept your resume, whether you, that you will be hired or fired all kinds of illnesses that occur in later in life, all of these things are not in our control. They're, they're dependent on our mazal, and that mazal has been decreed from, by above, from Hashem. So, our emuna has taught us that not only a kol bidei shamayim, not only is everything from heaven, but a kol etova, that everything that happens is for the good. Nothing that happens that comes down from above is bad. And for some reason, people in Iran like the word bad because the, in English and in Farsi, it's the same thing. Bad is bad. <laughs> right? Same thing. Bad. But there's no such thing as bad if it's from Shemaim. It's good. It's all from Shemaim. Is there any bad and evil? Yes, human beings can be evil. They can do bad things. Human beings to each other, they can hurt each other. But if it comes down to Shemaim, if it's something that has happened to me, it's only good. I don't understand and I don't see the good behind it, but it is good. So when one begins to think about things that are happening in his life that he has no control over, remember he has no control over it, things that are totally out of his control, then he has to understand that if he has strong emunah, this is Mishamayim, and if it's Mishamayim, it's good. I just don't know. You know, imagine somebody who's catching, a, trying to catch a flight now. He missed his flight, an important flight. It was an important business deal. He lost a business deal. But later on, the plane crashed. Is he going to be happy or sad? He's going to be very happy he didn't make the plane. But initially, he doesn't understand. We go through life not understanding everything that happens to us. But if it's from Shemaim, and most of the time things are, big things in our life are Mishamayim, then it's for the good. There are things that I'm responsible for, of course. Marriage, the, the couple are responsible for each other to make it work. It's up to them. If they misbehave, they're ruining what Mishamayim was supposed to be something good for them. Hashem put you together with a husband or with a wife. For the most part, for the most part, most of the time, that's the correct match. But if one or the two of them misbehave, they can destroy their relationship. That's their decision. That's not from above. A divorce is not from above. A divorce is because the couple or one of them chose that he doesn't want it anymore. But otherwise, big things in life is Mishamayim. And if it's Mishamayim, it's good. Rabbis tell us in the Pasuk, Hodu Lashem Kitov. Kilolam Chasdo. What's Kitov? Thank Hashem for He is good. Where do we see the goodness of Hashem? 
that he takes from you what he blessed you with and doesn't take anything else. What does that mean? In other words, things could have been worse. And instead of taking you from this world, Chaz Shalom, he took your car. It was stolen. In other words, he's taking what he gave you, the tova, the good that he has given you, that was taken from you. Something broke in the house, Chaz Shalom. That's also Mishamayim, right? So all the good and all the benefit that he gave you, that is what he takes. So he's taking what he gave you, Lemaase. Don't feel so bad about it. It could have been a lot worse. He didn't hurt you personally. He didn't take you. He took that which belongs to you, which really belongs to him, because he gave you everything that you have. So that is why it's tov. It's in the good that he gave you, that, that is what he takes. Things could be a lot worse. Therefore, this emunah in Bitachon Bashem is a very important part of controlling our worries. Another quote that I have here from a I don't have the name here of uh, another famous uh, non-Jew <coughs> who says like this, fear can keep us up all night, but faith makes one fine pillow. Did you understand that? Fear can keep us up all night, but faith makes a good pillow. If you have faith, if you have emunah, bitachon b'ashem, it's a good pillow, nothing to worry about. Otherwise, the fear will keep you up a whole night. The fear, the concern, the worry. Rabbis also tell us that if you have a mission, and the mission is a mitzvah, and you have to go at night, and at night there's all kinds of dangers, including demons and the like. But since you are shaliach mitzvah, shalichai mitzvah nam nizokim, messengers of mitzvah will not get hurt. That t- takes a certain amount of emunah bitachon b'ashem. To believe that if you are going on a, on a lofty, important, holy mission, a mitzvah, there's nothing for you to worry about. Obviously, you have to be cautious. I mean, you don't put yourself in danger. But you can't begin to worry because you have additional protection if you're a shaliyah mitzvah. All of this takes emunah. You have to have the emunah, the faith in God that this is true. The next idea that can help us with worries is also Shalom Amalek's idea and psychologists of course agree with it you know, they, they've, they've discovered that these things help but Shalom Amalek already told this to us many many years ago the Gemara tells us what is the meaning of the words as, the, as quoted in the Pasuk that if one has a fear or a worry Yashchena. What does Yashchena mean? The letter Yashchena is written with a sin. Yud sin. And if you read it with a sin instead of a shin, it says, it reads Yesihena. Yesihena, if it's written with a samach, means something else than Yesihena if it's written with a sin. But sin and samach are almost very much sounding alike, but they have two different meanings and they both are acceptable for this verse. If you have worries, one of the ways to deal with the worry is yesihena le'acherim, speak it over with others. So a good strategy for dealing with worries is don't keep it to yourself. Talk about it to others, but talk about it to people who are positive. Talk about it to people who you're close and friendly to. They will help you. By talking about something that is on your mind, it calms you down. The worries take a back seat. It, it's not, it will not be as bothersome anymore. So this is a very good idea. Anytime a person is very, very worried, talk about it to someone else. The second pirush, the second interpretation of the same word, but written as though it would be written with a samach, yesichena, yesichena min da'ato. If you have a worry, you're better off just removing it. Distract yourself. Do something to get rid of it because it's not something that you need to have on your mind. Most worries should not be there to begin with, so do whatever you can to distract yourself. What do you do to distract yourself? Distraction is a very good thing. Distraction could either be uh, doing, beginning to do something. Go do something. Go play ball. Go take a drive. That's one form of distraction. I like what Thomas Edison says. Remember Thomas Edison? A good cure for worrying is, is work. 
work is better is a better cure than whiskey because some people take whiskey so a, as a cure for worrying it's better to work to do something than to drink whiskey I agree you know you don't want to drink a lot of people drink a lot of non-jews drink they become drunk so they forget about their worries they get up you think the worry went away <laughs> it comes back it's not a good cure a good cure is work do something be active be productive do something because if a person does not work does not do anything he's not active he begins to worry to have all kinds of thoughts that uh, make him sick like as you said in the very beginning these things these kind of feelings make makes one sick so it's a good thing to be distracted so get it off your mind but how are you gonna get it off your mind one way is to do something It's important to make a plan. If you have a real potential worry, something that you really have a problem with, you're afraid you're gonna be audited. <laughs> well, you should have been careful on how you filled out your income tax return. But let's say, whatever, you did your best. Have a plan. Listen, get your papers in place. Speak to a CPA. Familiarize yourself with the law if you need to. Make a plan. Deal with it as best as you can. Make a plan if possible and try to sort things out. Seek the advice of somebody if you need to seek the advice. The idea behind this plan and advice is instead of just worrying about something, look for a solution. Put effort into finding a solution. A lot of people are just stuck worrying, not doing anything. Okay, you have a valid worry. Let's say you're really concerned. You're really afraid of something. Then invest some of your effort in finding a solution. Don't just sit there and think about it. Do something. Try to find a solution. Spend some time and effort on figuring out what to do about it. Many times people don't have all the facts. It's important to, to get all the facts right. Sometimes you may be wrong in your assumptions and you're worrying yourself for nothing. So if you have a situation which is giving you a lot of worry and you're concerned about, you don't know what's gonna be, try to see if you know all the facts because maybe you're wrong Maybe it's not exactly the way you think it is. Maybe it's not, as, it's not so bad. It's good to do exercise. People are stressed out. Remember, the stress, worry, anxiety, they're all related. It's a little bit, each one is a little bit different. One is, one is something that you feel, but you don't necessarily express, or it's not something you necessarily think about. Anxiety, you're not exactly think about something specific. It's just a symptom that is developing there with palpitations of the heart, perhaps, sweating, perhaps. All of this is a, an expression of the worries or concerns that a person has, and that's called anxiety. And of course, there you have, you have the, the stress that has built up in the body. The body is, is tight, the body is stressed out as a result of all that's going on in his, in his body and in his mind, the emotions, the feelings, the, the, the worries, all of that causes stress. So in order to free one of stress, you have to go to the, the root of the problem, exercise a little bit and get rest. Rest is something that many, many times helps alleviate the problem. Not long term, but at least short term. It's good to, to it's very important to have a good diet to get enough sleep because people are eat, today eating a lot of junk food. So they're not, getting the, they're not getting their vitamins, they're not getting healthy food into their system, they're not getting enough sleep. So the combination of not getting the right food, not getting enough sleep, being stressed out with the lifestyle that we have today, you can imagine why people get heart attacks and, and why people need bypasses and all kinds of issues. Every generation has its maladies. Every, every, every period in our history has had its problems of sicknesses because Hashem, of course, wants us to turn to him but there are things that people do to themselves and that's what people are doing to themselves today it's stressing themselves out so one way to cure this is to get enough exercise to get enough rest yes I'm sorry, can I ask a question? yeah mm -hmm. what when can we draw the line though between distracting yourself and, and having it become denial in your own mind you can distract yourself so much that the problem is gone but it's still there yeah, that's a good question. Are we talking about denial or distraction? We're not talking about denial. But 
you, you do need to remove it from your mind if it's something which really there's nothing that you can do about it. So it's not correct to call that denial because denial is when you're in denial about that something does not exist. Here, it, it potentially may never happen, something that you're worried about. It may potentially never be a problem. So you're not really in denial. It's much more something that is not real. So you're doing yourself a favor and not, by not focusing on it because it's not something that you can do anything about. Denial is when you can do something about it. It's something concrete. It's something real. But you don't, but you don't want to admit it. That's denial. So denial doesn't really belong here. It's, it's a, it's, we're using a tactic called distraction, which is actually helpful in t at times when people are stressed out. You want to change subject. You want to do something to get away from the scene. People go on vacation not only to rest, but to change the scenery, to be distracted from their, their, their worries, their daily routine. It's helpful. That's a distraction which is helpful. So here it's a tactic that can help one break the, 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 the negative routine, the negative energy that is around, the, the worries and the, the problems that we all, we all encounter from time to time, but we don't necessarily deal with it properly. It's very important to stay away from negative people. I mean, negative people or negative news. A lot of people hear the news today. What are, you, what are they going to hear the news? Only bad news. And I've mentioned this many, many times. Not, there's not that much good news when you hear the radio or, or look at the internet or read a newspaper. These are, what are you going to see? Mostly bad things. Another politician getting caught with something, right? Another rapist, another murder, taxes going up, unemployment going up. Oh, only bad news. And people are stressed out from this, especially if they're having a hard time themselves in their life. They don't have a job. Now they could, you know what that bad news is going to do to them? It's going to increase uh, their stress level. It's going to make things worse for them, not better for them. So you don't want to introduce that. You don't want to expose that to them because it, it, it's not a fix. If anything, it makes things worse. So you don't want to make things worse. So you want to stay away from those negative people or negative things that only make things worse. And that's what they do. They're not very positive. Uh, they don't have a positive influence. They're not very uh, healthy to have around us. The, all this news. Just have to, you have to know the basics. And that's it. And, and don't try to get it in, in, in color and from different sources. Uh, internet, TV, radio. People, I mean, are so bombarded with, between, between all these sources of news that, uh, you know, it, it's, it hurts. And I feel bad for the Israelis, you know, when they get, into, they get on a bus, they have to hear the news every 20 minutes, every half an hour. You know, it sounds, you know, this is the news from Yerushalayim, the hour is 12 noon, and this is what's happening. Who wants to hear it every 20 minutes, every half an hour? And that's, you know, the, the bus driver is gonna make sure he raises the volume so everybody can hear. And he repeats the news of the same thing that has happened and it's usually not good news. Again, all over the world, it's the same thing. Usually, we don't hear good news. So why, why hear all of that? If you ever go away on vacation, and you don't hear the news, and you don't have access to the internet for three, four days, you will see the difference. Oh, you'll feel a lot better. You don't care about it. But some people are so addicted to it, they have to know what's going on. You don't have to. Who says you have to know? I mean, unless it's your business or something. It's better not to know about these, these things are not helpful. They're not healthy. <clears throat> Another idea that can be very helpful, if somebody is worried about something in particular that is giving him a hard time, he doesn't know how to deal with it, what to do about it, ask yourself, will this matter in 50 years from now? Sometimes if you stop and think about something, this that I'm, being wor that I'm worried about, will this matter 50 years from now? Well, you, know, if, if you might say to yourself, of course it will not. It will be ridiculous. Nobody will care about it by then. So why worry about it now? If it's really important, then it's going to be important 50 years from now too, right? If it's really that important. So try to be smart. Ask yourself this question. Be your own psychologist. Will this really matter 50 years from now? This may help you too. Then you have the individuals who blame themselves for everything. Oh, it's my bad luck. I always have bad luck. 
always terrible things happen to me. It only happens to me. They're always complaining and nagging and always bitter. Everything is wrong in their life. Everything is bad. That's a very bad attitude to have. First of all, it's wrong. It's not true. There's no such an individual in this world that has all the bad luck. Right? There's such a thing. I mean, everything is Bishamayim, we said before. Everything is for the good. It must be for some good cause. You don't know of it. So don't think like that. Don't blame yourself for that. It's, it, it's, it's not right. I mean, it's completely wrong to, have to think like that. that. I mean, anybody that thinks like that, I mean, they're never going to be happy. You know, because it could be that they are having a difficult life, experiencing a difficult life, and not everything is, is within our control to fix or to correct or change. It's just that. But don't blame yourself for it. Things are the way they are sometimes because that's the way Hashem wants it to be. And it must be for some good cause. Instead of looking at all the negative, people really should begin to focus on the positive. That everybody has some strength, some good things happening in his life. And this, you know, like, like they say in English, don't look at the cup that is half empty, it's half full. You know, there's a lot of things that are good. There's a lot of positive things happening. There's a lot of things that are good about every individual. Look at those, focus on the good that you have, on the strength that you have, instead of on all the terrible, terrible things that are happening in my life, in his life. Don't, don't think like that. Don't focus on that. Try to change your focus on the positive things. Now, some people, the reason why they have this problem is because they're imperfection. They're perfectionists. People who like things to be just right. Perfect, we call them perfectionists. So I have something to tell perfectionists. Listen carefully to those who are perfectionists. Shake hands with imperfection. You know what that means? Shake hands? In other words, you better come to understand that perfection does not exist. So shake hands with imperfection. Perfectionism and inner peace cannot coexist. You will be perfectly dead someday. But until then, you will not be perfect. I like that one. <laughs> perfect? Yeah, you will be perfectly dead one day. <laughs> but until then, you will not be perfect. That's it. Life is not perfect. So what can you do? So shake hands with imperfection. Make peace. Shake hands. You know, was realize, kachaze, olam, chaim. That's life. Nothing is always perfect. And... Don't worry so much. Well, you, would, you need to always get an A+. Plus. You always need to do everything perfect. You're going to be stressed out. You're going to be worried. You're not going to be happy. Do your best. It didn't work out. It's okay. Life is not so perfect. Now we've come to a, another idea, which for Jews, and for non-Jews is good, but especially for Am Yisrael, we have a special relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and that's called Tefillah. We have worries sometimes, we have issues, let's call them issues that sometimes bother us. We don't know what to do, how to do it right. That's what tefillah is all about. Tefillah is not only a connection with Hashem, it is a, it is a way to turn and ask Him to help. And sometimes He's actually waiting for us to turn to Him. And after we have turned to Him, then He will help us. Sometimes He actually holds back children. He doesn't give the couple children right away. Pray to me. I want you to remember that you depend on me and that you need me. Because if I give you everything automatically, you'll never turn to me. You'll never ask me for anything. We ask Hashem for health. We ask Him for parnasah. We ask Him for children. We ask Him for everything. To, to guide us properly, that we do the right thing, that we don't make mistakes. We need to pray regularly. Even if you have parnasah, even if you have kids, even if you have health, that those things should not be taken away. Because they can be taken away. Chaz shalom. So we always want to pray, we always want to ask him that he should forgive us, that he should show us to do the right things, that he should protect us. This, this is the right thing for a Jew to do at all times, regardless of his situation, but especially if he's in a difficult uh, situation, the more so. Here's another quote that I found about praying to God. And this is from a non-Jew. Every evening I turn my worries to God. He's going to stay awake all night anyway. <laughs> so, so every evening I turn my worries to him. He's going to be up. Yes. 
In other words, if you have a worry, turn to him. He's up, he's awake, he's listening. Turn to him. And the tefillah itself, this meditation form of prayer, this connection, does a lot for an individual. And I have no doubt that if somebody is really uh, constant in his prayers, in his emunah, does things right, makes a great effort to strengthen his emunah, he will see that Hashem will respond to his prayers. Then you have one more individual, and he's the type who thinks that he can fix the whole world. He's a do-it-all, tries to get as much possible done, and he's very active, and he's disappointed and upset or worried that he can't accomplish everything. We're not talking about the perfectionist anymore. We're just talking about the guy who really th- wants to do everything, wants to help as much as possible to people, wants to get things done as much as possible, an accomplisher, a doer. I have a quote for him too. Because this man can be- begin to worry that he's not doing enough, that he's not doing everything, that he's not doing everything as, as the way it should be, the quote for him is, you want to achieve peace of mind? Resign as general manager of the universe. <laughs> Resign. Resign as general manager of the universe. Nice quote, cute. Who, ha- who has to make you? Who? Why? You don't have to fix all the problems of the world. You don't have to worry about everything. You're not the general manager of the universe. Leave it to Hashem. You don't have to worry about everything. Whatever you can do, do. Whatever you can do, just forget about it. It, it's chaval. It, why occupy your mind with things that are not really yours to occupy yourself with? Last but not least, let's not forget what Shlomo Melech tells us in Kohelet. Kohelet is a book that was written by Shlomo Melech, they say, towards the end of his life. His short life. But he saw a lot. He experienced a lot. He was the wealthiest, smartest. He had almost just about anything his heart desires. And what was his punchline in Kohelet? How does he begin that famous book of Kohelet? Hakol Hevel. Hevel Havalim Amar Kohelet. Everything is just a bunch of nonsense. It's all vanities anyway. Except for, of course, Torah Mitzvot Yerat Hashem. Which is why at the very end of Kohelet, he says the opposite. Just make sure. What man is all about, what matters the most, is the fear of God. That's the bottom line. To observe his mitzvot, to fear him, to do the right thing, according to the Torah. That is something that you should always hold on to. That is the priority number one. That is what life is all about. That's the punchline. That's the important thing about life. But the very beginning and all along, he makes fun of everything. He basically says, look, look, look. <laughs> one of the funniest and the saddest episodes in, or incidents in, in, a, in a life is, he says, a guy who was working so hard, making money, saving it all up, and he, he saved up a lot of money, and at the end what happened? He died, and the second husband of his wife inherited it all. He says, isn't that funny and sad at the same time? But it happens. He never enjoyed it. He worried, bothered, made so much effort, and he never enjoyed it. People talk about how they have plans about what they're going to do when they retire. They never end up making it to retirement. They start worrying about it, you know. It's chaval, it hasn't come yet. Don't worry, don't think too much into it. If it's not so important, if it's not something related to Torah and Mitzvot, there's no reason to be so focused on it. If it's vanities, if it's Olam Azef, for sure not. It will only give you more grief and sorrow and disappointment. So why, why, why even think about it? This world, the rabbis remind us, is Olam Arai. It's a very temporary world. Before you know it, it's finished. Quick, it goes like that before you know it. It's finished, it's gone. Just yesterday, you were in high school. Just re- recently, you were married. I mean, before you know it, you're 50, 60. It goes like that. Life goes very quickly, right? Yes, sir. Very quick. <laughs> yeah. Before you turn around, it's over. Then why worry about it? Do as much as you can, accomplish what you can, make sure that you do the right thing in the eyes of Hashem, that you have a good name, a good reputation, take care of your health, take care of your family, of course, we all have responsibilities. These are normal, good, valid things, but everything else, yeah, it's not worth it. Just for conclusion, I'd like to share with you a, I think it's a legend, 
I don't know if it's if it happened or not because I haven't seen the source of it, but it's beautiful. David Amelech needed a ring, and uh, the ring had to be very special. And he asked the somebody who makes rings to make this ring ornamental, that it was beautiful, but it should also have something special. It should not only be ornamental, it should also be something special. So the guy did not know what to do, how to make something that is also beneficial, you know, special, and also ornamental. So he turned to Shalom, the son of David. Shalom, can you advise me what to write or what to do in this ring that your father wants that he's going to have on him all the time? What's a good thing to, to write on it, to inscribe on it, something special? So he told him, write the following words, Gamze Yavor. This too shall also come to pass. If he's ever in the middle of war and he's winning and he's so happy of himself and he's so proud, this too shall come to pass. So what? Big deal. It's going to come. If he's ever arrogant and so happy, it can go away. And if he's ever in the opposite kind of a situation where things are tough, things are not going his way, look at your ring. Gamze Yavor. This too should also come to pass. Whenever you see things are not working out the way you want it, things are difficult, instead of worrying, look at that ring. This too should come to pass. Everything passes. Everything goes by. No reason to get stuck in this kind of a situation where, oh, what am I going to do? This too shall pass. Everything passes. Everything goes by. You know, people take pictures these days. 200, 300 years ago, there weren't pictures. They spent thousands of dollars on a video, cameraman for a wedding. I want to ask all of you, since all of you I'm sure are familiar with videos and pictures of weddings and anniversaries, how many times in a person's life will a couple look at the album of their wedding? Ah, they, so they got to, all the positions, you got to stand this way, stand next to him, stand next to her, have the whole <laughs> family together, and now the nieces, and now the other side of the family. The photographer drives you crazy, you spend several hours and several thousand dollars on an album that is going to collect dust in some shelf that you're going to look at occasionally, once, twice, three times, maybe in your whole life. And this is albums, memories, they're beautiful. I'm not telling you not to take pictures, but don't make of it a big deal. Don't make of it, it's not a big deal. It's good to have, it's good to have a picture. You want to see how you look when you had a full head of hair? Yes. Look, <laughs> go back. Yeah. How you were slim? Yes. Yeah, it's time to lose some weight? Good. <laughs> look at the pictures, before and after. <laughs> That's fine, that's okay. But what is a picture? You know, these things are memories, but these memories are gone before you know it. So your grandchildren say, oh, this was my grandfather. Okay, that's nice for them to have these memories. That's not the ikar. That's not the most important thing. In other words, people spend so much time, effort, money on things that are not ikar and are not important. It's one thing if they spend it, another thing is that they have to worry about it. Oh, it didn't come out right. Oh, this is, why worry about things that are so trivial? And that's the biggest mistake people, one of the biggest mistakes people make is they worry, and they not only worry too much, they worry about things that are trivial. Heaven avalim, trivialities, vanities. Most of the things we worry about is vanities. If anything, we should worry about our neshama. That is a good thing to worry about. Worry about, are we doing what we need to do? Are we taking care of this beautiful soul that Hashem gave us? Are we doing everything we can with our short life? Hashem gave us a certain amount of years. Are we maximizing our time? Or are we wasting it? This is already a correct worry. If these are the kinds of worries that we have in our mind at all times, then we will end up doing the right thing. Thank you.